The music industry is a tough place to be in. I mean, just dealing with fans, labels, and the overnight loss of privacy is already a lot to deal with. Now, if you're a rapper coming from the hood, then the heat is just turned to like a thousand degrees. You're fighting everybody, and you could end up losing much, much more than privacy. Breaking news overnight, Grammy-nominated rapper Nipsey Hussle shot and killed. Rapper Takeoff, best known for being a member of the Grammy award-winning group Migos, has died. Deerfield Beach, the rapper XXX Tentacion has been shot. In the case of Young Dolph, everyone saw it coming. He had a rival, Yo Gotti, who was really scared of him, and most people agreed that it was because Dolph would claim the title of King of Memphis through sheer creativity and being independent. Every last one of them put together like they can't, you can't compete. The music business. Not everyone wants to say it, but the elephant in the room concerning the beef between Dolph and Gotti was the stark contrast in their ideas of how the music business should go. It started years ago when Dolph claimed Yo Gotti had wanted to sign him. Let me explain what record labels are and how they function so you can appreciate the pure artistry of Dolph if you didn't already. Record labels, the homes of musical talents, are highly esteemed institutions akin to sports clubs. Musicians strive to make it onto a label, viewing it as the pinnacle of their careers. However, the journey only becomes more intense and daunting from there. The reverence for record labels stems from their multifaceted support network for artists. With marketing teams, press teams, radio pluggers, and more, they provide a robust team to aid artists in areas they might not excel in, such as business and marketing. The A&R, artists and repertoire representatives, are key figures in the label ecosystem. These individuals scour platforms like TikTok and Instagram in search of the next viral sensation, replacing the old days of scouting talent in nightclubs and talent shows. There are distinctions between major major labels and indie labels. Major labels cater to artists with the potential to draw massive attention on social media, while indie labels focus on acts at the forefront of style and genre. Indie labels may lack the resources of major labels, but they can be a more realistic starting point for artists without a large following or famous name. To secure a deal with a major label, artists must amass a significant social media following, often employing social media managers for assistance. A and R reps seek acts that encompass the complete package, evaluating factors like followers on Instagram and TikTok, content engagement, relatability, talent, and humor. Viral sensations like Bella Porch are examples of the route to major label success. On the other hand, getting signed to an indie label involves a different approach. Acts with a few thousand followers can attract the attention of indie labels. Staying true to a specific subgenre and embracing underground scenes can be crucial for indie success. Connecting with underground blogs, Spotify playlists, DIY underground shows can help spread the word organically. The indie world offers ample growth opportunities, provided artists maintain their artistic integrity and avoid selling out. Indie labels like Jajagua, 4AD, Anti, and None Such are prominent players, supporting acts that stay authentic and committed to their craft. However, not everything that shines is necessarily valuable. If you take a closer look at how record labels operate, you'll uncover some toxic truths hidden beneath the glamorous lives artists showcase once they sign with these labels. It's these toxic aspects that explain why certain artists like Young Dolph opt to pursue their music independently. There was a time when record labels and artists had had a mutually beneficial relationship. At that time, 85% of profits from music releases would go to the label, and the artist retained 15%. This setup seemed reasonable, since artists had control over other revenue streams like touring and merchandise. Back then, a deal with one meant lifelong success. However, everything changed with the rise of streaming and file-sharing platforms. The introduction of Rhapsody in 2001 marked the beginning of a new era, leading to the emergence of popular platforms like Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. This shift had a profound impact impact on the music industry, causing album and CD sales to plummet and record labels to suffer significant losses. To adapt to this changing landscape, record labels introduced album advances and recoupable payments. Album advances became a prominent feature in the system, allowing labels to invest in artists to make their albums successful. This financial assistance covered recording equipment, writers, producers, and advertising, but it came at a cost. The apparent display of wealth by new artists with flashy cars and expensive clothes in their music videos was often funded by the record label. While this helped attract fans and generate income, the money spent was considered a recoupable payout. Consequently, artists had to repay this amount to the label, usually from their 15% share of profits. This system sometimes puts artists in big debt to the record label even before they become famous. For example, an artist gets an album advance of $200,000. If the artist makes $1 million from the first album, they might end up 15%, which is $150,000. But remember, they still owe the label $200,000.
which will be paid from their 15%. This could still leave them with a debt of $50,000, considering the money they owe from the advance they got. So it can be tough for them to make a lot of money even if their album does well. Moreover, the pressure to pay off these debts pushes artists into a cycle of continuously making albums. While some successful artists manage to recoup the money and turn a personal profit, many struggle to escape the burden of debt. As a result, some artists found themselves trapped in a relentless cycle of producing music solely to repay their debts to the record label. This pressure to meet financial obligations often overshadowed artistic expression and creative freedom, leading to potentially detrimental effects on an artist's career and well-being. Big record labels like Universal Music Group, Warner Music Group, and Sony BMG often act like venture capitalists. They sign contracts with lots of artists, hoping one of them will become a huge success, like Lady Gaga or Taylor Swift. But here's the harsh reality. Most artists signed by these labels don't make it big. They end up in debt to the label, struggling to pay back the money they received as an advance. The labels keep pushing their top earners to make up for these losses. Record labels can be pretty ruthless. They drop artists at the slightest hint of less than perfect success. They focus on promoting some artists while ignoring others. Only a small fraction of artists who get signed by major labels actually stay with them for long. One reason for this mess is the number of people involved in making a song. The labels want to play it safe, so they control the creative process and market what they think will sell best. This means the artists often lose control over their own music. Some labels even take ownership of the final product, including future earnings, leaving the artists with little say. But some artists choose not to get entangled with big record labels in the first place, even when huge deals are on the table. King of Memphis, Adolph Robert Thornton Jr., known as Young Dolph, was an American rapper who made a mark in the music industry. In 2016, he released his debut album, King of Memphis, which reached number 49 on the Billboard 200 chart. He gained further popularity with his feature on OT Genesis's hit single, Cut It, which reached number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100. Young Dolph's fifth album, Rich Slave, released in 2020, became his most successful project, debuting at number four on the Billboard 200. Young Dolph's early life was marked by challenges. He was born on July 27, 1985 in Chicago, Illinois, and his family moved to Memphis, Tennessee when he was just two years old. Raised mostly by his grandmother, Ida May, he faced the struggles of having parents with drug addiction. Despite the difficult circumstances, he found strength and wisdom in his grandmother's teachings, which influenced his independence and determination. Young Dolph's journey in music began in 2008 when he released his first mixtape, Paper Root Campaign. Encouraged by its local success, he fully embraced his passion for rap and established his own independent independent record label called Paper Route Empire in 2010. Over the years, he honed his unique rap style, distinguishing himself with a captivating voice and magnetic delivery. His collaborations and connection with Atlanta trap rapper Gucci Mane added to his growing popularity. Young Dolph released several mixtapes, including East Atlanta Memphis and Trappin' Out a Mansion, which featured other notable artists. His mixtape American Gangster received significant recognition, especially for the song Preach. Young Dolph's talent and hard work earned him a prominent place in the rap scene and he continued to make an impact with his music until his unfortunate passing on November 17, 2021. Young Dolph was more than just a rapper. He had a strong bond with his hometown, Memphis, and his generosity made him a beloved figure in the city. Despite his success, he never forgot where he came from and always gave back to the community that supported him. From donating $25,000 to his old high school to regularly handing out hundreds of turkeys during giveaways, Young Dolph showed immense care for the people who looked up to him. He grew up in South Memphis, facing the challenges of poverty but his music connected with the locals like no other. He embodied the city's essence and provided advice through his songs like a wise streetwise uncle. Young Dolph's success didn't change him. He remained down to earth and connected with his roots. He credited Memphis for his achievements and believed in the importance of family and support. Even beyond Memphis, he showed generosity, gifting money and extravagant prizes to fans and even supporting the baristas from Duke University who were fired for playing Dolph's song on the clock. In the music industry, Young Dolph carved a path for himself as an independent artist. He believed in hard work and talent, and his success proved his point. He considered himself the spokesperson for those in the streets and independent artists, proving that you can make it big without compromising on your values. Before his untimely passing, Young Dolph had achieved everything he set out to do. He even contemplated retirement, but couldn't walk away from his passion and purpose. He left a legacy of giving back, being true to himself, and proving that success can be achieved through hard work and dedication. Deep within his label of Paper Root Empire, Young Dolph stood as a true master of self-marketing. As an independent artist, he seized the 
reins of his own destiny, tirelessly promoting his music in neighborhood clubs, befriending local DJs, and even enlisting renowned ones for hosting duties and securing impressive collaborations. No record label could comprehend the intricate connection he held with the very streets he grew up on. Time and again, he substantiated this fact, releasing a staggering seven albums, including two dynamic collaborations with his cousin Key Glock, 19 mixtapes, and an awe-inspiring Paper Root Empire compilation album. While Dolph's music often oozed braggadocio, it wasn't what made him unique. Woven into his lyrics were conversations with his parents, infusing his boasts with a genuine warmth that came from lived experiences. Amidst artists who resort to cliches, Dolph's unique sense of humor always set him apart. Young Dolph also possessed a profound ability for introspection that was ingrained in his very being. In an interview, Dolph unapologetically revealed his preference for solitude, acknowledging that he thrived in the tranquility of his own company. Despite his role as an entertainer, he cherished moments of seclusion. It was during these periods of introspection that he was at his creative best, conceiving and honing his craft with remarkable prowess. Being alone provided him the space and clarity to develop his ideas, resulting in superior outcomes across various aspects of his life, including financial success. Reflecting on life's fragility, he penned the heart-wrenching track While You Here, emphasizing the importance of expressing love while you still can. His awareness of the influence he had on his children and nephews hit hard in lyrics like, everything that I do, I got a son watching now, I got nephews and little cousins that look up to me, amidst his fun-loving street anthems. Throughout his career, Dolph amassed a roster of collaborators that read like a who's who of mainstream and underground Southern rap royalty, but his appeal transcended regional boundaries, earning him fans and partners all across the nation. His mainstream presence remained true to his terms. Dolph propelled OT Genesis's Cut It into a double platinum top 40 hit, showcasing his ability to deliver show-stealing verses. Even when working with A-list producers like Mike Will and Metro Boomin, he maintained creative control, never chasing trends. Despite his larger-than-life image, Dolph's writing made him relatable to all. During the pandemic, he lightened the mood by photoshopping masks onto his album covers, providing a much-needed moment of levity. In his track Sunshine, he exhibited remarkable insight, expressing the benefits of taking time off during the pandemic and showing empathy for frontline workers. Dolph's music resonated deeply, touching on the spirit of the blues, imbued with a powerful sense of empathy. He candidly spoke about his parents' struggles with addiction, but harbored no grudges. As his writing evolved, he defied stereotypes, becoming a street rapper with a steadily growing audience and an abundance of meaningful messages to convey. With Paper Road Empire, Dolph nurtured local talent for the long term. Already, he had propelled Key Glock to local stardom, releasing cherished collaboration albums and generating major hits. His support extended to signees like Jay Fizzle and Big Moochie Great, elevating their profiles. Dolph never saw himself as an impossible act to follow. He provided a blueprint for all to heed. Though he reached the pinnacle of success on his own, he readily extended a helping hand to others. Full Blown War the rap scene in Memphis had been dominated by Yo Gotti, who gained national fame with hit singles like I Know and the smash hit Down in the DM. Not only has Yo Gotti risen in popularity, but he has also established his own empire through his CMG imprint, which houses talented artists like Snooty Wild and Black Youngstar from Memphis. However, amidst Yo Gotti's reign, a formidable contender emerged in the form of Young Dolph. In 2008, Young Dolph founded Paper Root Empire, and it wasn't long before he began making waves with his High Class Street music mixtape series. Collaborative projects with heavyweights like Gucci Mane and Pee Wee Longway further cemented his growing presence in the rap game. By 2015, Young Dolph's buzz and fan base had soared, putting him in direct competition with Yo Gotti and eventually leading to a tense rivalry. The beef between Young Dolph and Yo Gotti reached its peak in 2016, with both artists engaging in a public feud, each firing shots at the other through their music and social media. Young Dolph, known for his candid approach, openly expressed his grievances towards Yo Gotti, particularly referencing the time when he declined Yo Gotti's offer to sign a record deal with CMG. According to Dolph, Gotti took offense to his decision, laying the foundation for their ongoing animosity. One significant moment in the escalating conflict was when Young Dolph announced that his debut album would be titled King of Memphis. This move caught the attention of many, as Yo Gotti had long claimed the title for himself. Although Gotti remained silent on the matter, the Memphis rap community interpreted Dolph's album title as a direct challenge to Gotti's claim to the throne. Despite the tension, Young Dolph attempted to downplay the feud during a radio show appearance in February 2016. He acknowledged Yo Gotti's early support in his career and clarified that his album title wasn't meant as a diss, but rather reflected the mindset of himself and his crew, considering themselves kings in their own right. However, the tension escalated further when Yo Gotti's CMG artist Black Youngstar publicly insulted Young Dolph in a video posted on Instagram. Black Youngstar questioned Dolph's claim as the king of Memphis and resorted to offensive language and threats, making it evident that the animosity between the two camps was indeed genuine. 
genuine. March 2nd, 2016 marked a significant escalation in the feud between Young Dolph and Yo Gotti as Black Youngster showed up in Young Dolph's neighborhood in Memphis. Accompanied by a group of his associates, Black Youngster was armed with heavy weaponry as they roamed through South Memphis's Castalia neighborhood, apparently on the lookout for Young Dolph. While the two parties did not cross paths during this encounter, the incident made it evident that the animosity between them ran much deeper than just a war of words on social media and in their music. On March 12, 2016, Yo Gotti addressed Black Youngstar's involvement in the beef during an interview with Tim Westwood. Despite the speculations that Gotti might have instigated the situation, the CMG boss denied responsibility for Youngstar's action, stating that he sees himself as a big brother figure to the young artist and advised him against handling matters with aggression and threats. While Young Dolph had mostly taken the high road in the feud, his patience wore thin by March 16, 2016. Through a series of posts on his Instagram account, Dolph openly retaliated against Yo Gotti, accusing him of harboring resentment towards Memphis rap legends like 3-6 Mafia and 8-Ball and MJG. He also claimed that Gotti sent Black Youngsta to fight his battles and even called the police on it. Dolph made it clear that he had no intentions of ever signing with Gotti, and he further reminded him of his falling out with Gucci Mane, implying that Gotti's anger towards him was rooted in his continued association with Gucci. In response to Dolph's scathing remarks, Black Youngstar wasted no time and released a diss track titled Shake Soom on March 17, 2016. In the song, Youngstar discredited Young Dolph's connections to Memphis and challenged his claim of being the king of the city. He used harsh lyrics to assert his loyalty to Gotti and questioned Dolph's authenticity and credibility as an artist from Memphis. Months after arguing with Young Dolph, Black Youngstar declared the feud to be over in an interview on September 9, 2016. Youngstar put a stop to the rivalry by revealing that Yo Gotti genuinely liked Young Dolph despite their conflict, but Dolph refused to accept that it was resolved, leaving room for more conflict. Young Dolph exploded with his diss track, Play With Yo which was directed at Yo Gotti, along with scathing generalizations like, I don't know no gangsters that beef with dykes, and references to having relationships with Gotti's child's mother, Dolph cast his adversary as a hater by rhyming, you came up rapping dissing 3-6 Mafia. Many people were interested in seeing Yo Gotti's response to Young Dolph's nasty diss track, but Yo Gotti chose to take the high road by remaining silent about his fight with him. Shortly after the song's release, Yo Gotti would post on social media, bragging about his collaborations with A-listers like Jay-Z and L.A. Reid. This was his way of subtly alluding to being unbothered and unconcerned with his counterpart's words. After Black Youngstar publicly resolved the long-standing feud between himself, Yo Gotti, and Young Dolph, many were surprised when Young Dolph decided to release a diss track, reigniting the animosity. However, Young Dolph clarified his actions and motivations during an appearance on DJ Holiday's radio show on February 9, 2017. Regarding Yo Gotti's mixtapes, Young Dolph pointed out that they contained subtle disses aimed at him. Feeling that Yo Gotti was playing games, Young Dolph asserted that he wouldn't stoop to Yo Gotti's level. Instead, he opted to take a different approach, shedding light on the truth. Young Dolph was determined to expose the facts one after another, leaving Yo Gotti unsure of how to respond, as there seemed to be no valid retort to the undeniable truth. Cocaine Music 9, White Friday, and Gotti's studio album, The Art of Hustle, were the mixtapes Dolph was referring to. The latter outsold Dolph's King of Memphis album, which was released on the same day. On the 11th of February, 2017, the hip-hop world was shaken as Yo Gotti's long silence on the brewing tension with Young Dolph came to an end. In an assertive move, he unleashed his diss track titled Don't Beef With Me, but skillfully avoided direct confrontation by opting for a subliminal approach. Teaming up with CMG artists Moneybag Yo and Black Young Star, the track served as a warning shot rather than an outright attack. Not one to back down, Young Dolph retaliated on February 24th, 2017 with the release of his Play With Yo music video. The video humorously parodied Yo Gotti, leaving no room for remorse. Dolph went all in, using a Gotti lookalike in the video, making it clear that the feud had escalated to new heights. The feud took a dangerous turn on February 25, 2017, when news spread that Young Dolph was targeted in a shooting in Charlotte, North Carolina. Over 100 rounds were fired at his vehicle, but thankfully, Dolph emerged unscathed thanks to his bulletproof SUV. Unfazed by the incident, he fearlessly took to the stage later that night, performing his Yo Gotti diss track, Play With Your the message was. Clear, he wasn't backing down. However, by March 7th, 2017, Young Dolph seemed to have a change of heart. He declared the feud with Yo Gotti as old news during an interview, shifting his focus toward the future rather than dwelling on the past. The beef appeared to have been temporarily put to rest. Just when it seemed the feud might simmer down, tragedy struck. On September 26, 2017, Young Dolph fell victim to yet another shooting, this time in Hollywood. Rushed to the hospital, details surrounding the incident were scarce. Speculations arose as Yo 
Bugatti was named a person of interest by the LAPD due to an altercation between their entourages escalating into gunfire. However, a day later, the LAPD clarified that Yo Gotti was not a person of interest in the shooting, dismissing the initial reports. Instead, an associate of Yo Gotti, Corey McClendon, was charged with attempted murder in connection to the incident. McClendon's arrest raised questions about the involvement of others in the fight with Young Dolph and their potential ties to the shooting. As investigations continued, Corey McClendon was surprisingly released without charges on September 28, 2017. Despite the lack of arrests, the tension between the two rappers was palpable, leaving fans and the general public on edge, wondering if this feud would ever truly be resolved. King's Dead on November 17, 2021, tragedy would strike one more time as Young Dolph met his untimely end at Makeda's homemade butter cookies on Airways Boulevard. The noon hour turned into a nightmare as gunmen stormed the shop and fatally shot Dolph. The Memphis Police Department circulated photos of the suspects, showing them wielding guns. With swift and merciless action, the assailants opened fire upon the store, killing Dolph in the process. The autopsy report revealed that Dolph had suffered approximately 22 gunshot wounds to his head, back, chin, neck, and both arms. This shocking loss left the general public questioning the motives and seeking justice for the young artist. In the wake of Dolph's death, the wheels of justice began to turn. A year later, three men were charged in connection with his killing. Among them was Hernandez Govan, who was arrested on November 10, 2022, as a suspect believed to have orchestrated the murder. The authorities vowed to bring closure to this heinous crime. Additionally, Justin Johnson, another suspect in Dolph's shooting death, was apprehended on January 11, 2022, in Indiana by the U.S. Marshals Service. Furthermore, Cornelia Julia Smith, who was arrested on December 9, 2021, faced charges related to the theft of the white Mercedes seen in the surveillance footage from the day of the shooting. As the legal proceedings unfolded, Govan faced charges of first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. Johnson and Smith, too, found themselves indicted on the conspiracy charge along with the other grave charges. Dolph's murder had occurred at Makeda's homemade butter cookies. The aftermath left the store closed. However, the co-owners, Maurice and Pamela Hill, faced threats following the rapper's death, causing them to contemplate keeping the store shut indefinitely. But after much consideration and 10 long months, the couple made a bold decision to reopen the store on September 17, 2022. In the wake of Dolph's passing, memorials began to spring up around Memphis, paying tribute to the late artist. A Dolph mural, created by artist Cameron Hill, adorned a shopping center near the intersection of Elvis Presley Blaldeed and Norris Road in South Memphis. This touching artwork, commissioned by the Ida Mae Family Foundation, was met with unfortunate vandalism and was ultimately canceled by by Dolph's family. However, the memory of Dolph lives on with a mural proudly displayed at Castalia Heights on the corner of Castalia Street and Boyle Avenue, as well as a street renaming in his honor. What was once Dunn Avenue, between Airways Beale Videos and Hayes Road, is now Adolph Young Dolph Thornton Jr. Avenue, a lasting testament to his impact on the city. Despite the loss, Young Dolph's legacy through Paper Root Empire continues. The label released Long Live Dolph, featuring an eight-track tribute, ensuring that Dolph's vision lives on through the work of talented artists like Big Moochie Great, Kenny Muni, Jay Fizzle, Jotty Bad, Snoop Bands, Paper Route Woo, and Chitana. The label's CEO, Daddio, stands firm in his commitment to fulfilling Dolph's aspirations. The world also witnessed posthumous releases honoring Dolph's talent and influence. Paper Route Empire released Hall of Fame on what would have been his 37th birthday. The song came with a poignant music visualizer, depicting a car adorned with a dolphin symbol racing through the streets of Memphis. The video showcased the street named after Dolph. Meanwhile, according to the Shelby County Jail System, Hernandez Govins' bond was paid, resulting in his release release on Thursday, May 11, 2023. In the ongoing case related to Young Dolph's tragic death, Govan, the alleged mastermind behind the murder, had his bond set at $90,000. Although Govan was not present in court, the judge, Lee Coffey, decided that his appearance was unnecessary. Should the bond be posted, Govan will be subjected to house arrest, with limited exceptions for medical reasons or meetings with his lawyer. The reason for the relatively low bond remains unclear, but District Attorney Steve Mulroy revealed that Young Dolph's family consented to the amount, and the court court did not dispute their decision. The family acknowledged the district attorney's actions and approved the course taken. Gavon has been accused of soliciting the murder of the rapper Young Dolph in 2021. However, new details came to light, leading to a re-evaluation of the situation. The district attorney explained that the information about Govan's role and medical conditions played a significant role in reaching this resolution, all with the goal of achieving justice in the case. Previously, Govan's attorney stated that he was experiencing health issues, including blood pressure problems, chest pains, and tingling 
in the arm. Now, with a new attorney, Manny Aurora, who has been meticulously reviewing extensive evidence alongside Tennessee licensed lawyer Handel Durham Jr., the defense recorded progress in the case. Aurora emphasized that having local counsel like Durham is essential, and they have been diligently examining the discovery materials. He expressed satisfaction with their current position in the case. The court cited safety and medical concerns as reasons for considering Govan's release on bond. The next court date for Hernandez Govan was set for Thursday, July 13, 2023, when he pleaded not guilty to the charges. The other suspects, Justin Johnson and Cornelius Smith, will go on trial on March 11, 2024. Jamarcus Johnson, a different suspect, was detained and charged with first-degree murder conspiracy in November 2022. The 26-year-old Jamarcus pleaded guilty in June 2023 after being charged as an accessory after the fact. The feud between Yo Gotti and Dolph reportedly began back in 2015 when Yo Gotti proposed that Dolph sign with his CMG label. However, Dolph decided to pave his own path and declined the offer, igniting a long-standing animosity between the two rappers. The conflict extended beyond mere social media jabs and diss tracks, escalating to the point of real-life violence, with shots being fired on multiple occasions, ultimately culminating in the tragic loss of Dolph's life. Even in the aftermath of Dolph's murder, the effects of this bitter feud continued to linger, casting a shadow that lasted well over a year. A tragic shooting unfolded in March 2023 at Privé, a soul food restaurant in Memphis, Tennessee, which has connections to Yo Gotti. The establishment was purchased by the rapper for his mother, Geraldine, who serves as the manager and chef. Privé became the scene of a violent incident that claimed the lives of two individuals and left five others injured. Upon the police's arrival at the scene, they found two male victims, with one of them tragically declared deceased on site. The second victim was hurriedly taken to a nearby hospital, yet he also succumbed to his injury. Five more individuals fell victim to the shooting, consisting of four males aged 37, 35, 31, and 30, along with one female aged 25. These additional victims were transported to hospitals by private vehicles, with authorities suspecting that the altercation originated inside the restaurant. According to the owner's lawyer, Arthur Horn, they were devastated by the tragedy. Preve has been operating for a decade, and this horrifying event is unprecedented for their establishment. Horn contradicted the police statement, claiming that the altercation actually occurred outside the restaurant. He explained that the incident unfolded in the parking lot and escalated into a shootout, contrary to any conflicting reports. And the unfortunate event took place at the end of the evening as the restaurant was closing. The choice made by a rapper to forge his own path in the music industry led to a remarkable legacy. But in the end, he couldn't escape the many toxic aspects of the game. Click the videos on your screen for more videos.